my name is Thomas Wortman. I'm a real estate agent in Del Norte County, California, and I am here talking with Cindy Vosberg, uh, who is the executive director of the Crescent City Del Norte County Chamber of Commerce and is also the executive director of the Visitor Center uh, in Crescent City. Cindy, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, the chamber and um, how you kind of came to Del Norte. Well, thank you, Thomas, for having me here. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I always love talking about uh, tourism and all things related to it. So my honor to be here. So I have been here in Del Norte County since 2007. Okay. But I grew up um, all my life from like 1963 up until I was 15, spending at least a week every summer up here because my aunt and uncle lived here, my mother's sister. And so even the night of the um, of the 1964 tsunami, you know, I can remember hearing our phone ring and my wow. mother the night getting up and answering it. And it was my Auntie Eva letting her know that uh, my uncle Everett had had to take his ship out on the ocean oh, because wow. there was a tidal wave coming. And, uh, you know, all of us getting up and waiting for the tidal wave and and uh, my aunt calling back to say that uh, Uncle Everett was fine. And but the town had gotten hit real bad. So, oh, wow. So back in 2006, I happened to see my my background is newspaper media. Okay. I spent uh, 40, I don't know, 43, 44 years in newspaper advertising and uh the position for the ad director came available up here back in 2006. And so I went ahead and, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. You're right. Doing a podcast. Oh, thank you. It's, it's our bi-coastal media guy. Come on over here. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing there today? Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Bringing her Rumiano cheese. All right. Oh, Yay. fantastic. Parker, what's up? <laughs> it's great. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> See, you thought it was your kids that would be interrupting. Uh -huh. <laughs> so um, so I came up and actually took the job at the local newspaper. And I was the um, advertising director at the Del Norte Triplicate and the Curry Coastal Pilot. And okay. after a few years, I was promoted to publisher at first the Triplicate and then publisher at both papers. Oh, great. And, uh, so this gig is actually um, for my twilight years. It's kind of what I'm doing as a hobby. I enjoy it so much. Oh, and, fantastic. Right. Well, it seems like you have um, some deep history with Del Norte. Um, if you could kind of just tell us about your, um, just your thoughts on how Del Norte has evolved over the years and, you know, sort of where you think uh, maybe it's headed or how it's, um, how it's changed just over the last, you know, 15 years since you've come back and, uh, were involved with the newspapers. You know, Thomas, I think that that this corner of California is one of the most magical places on earth. Mm -hmm. We have here the freshest air on the western seaboard. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first moved here, there was um, a woman named Valerie that had a jazzercise business downtown. And she shared the story of her husband who was ill with lung disease how they traveled from the Mexican border all the way up to the Canadian border and measured the air quality. And Del Norte County had the freshest air. And that's wow, why they were here. It's amazing. You know, we've got, look at, we've got the cleanest river in the United States right mm -hmm. here in Del Norte County with the mm -hmm. Smith River. We have the best water. We've got all of this abundant wildlife. You know, if you're into nightlife, then I guess you're going to have to do stargazing because we don't have a lot of things to do at night. And our skyscrapers are the beautiful, majestic redwood trees. That's great. And, you know, the the variety of wild birds that are here, you mm -hmm. know, we're a bird's paradise. Mm -hmm. And so that's what brought me here to Del Norte County. And that's what a lot of people who come and visit, why they end up wanting to live here is because they see all of this natural beauty. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. Um, it's really hard. I mean, you know, I've said this a few times now on the show, but it's really hard for me to envision wanting to live anywhere else. Uh, just it has there's something magical about it and something special with um, just everything you were saying, the air, the beauty of the, the, the natural surroundings, um, but then also the people as well. 
Um, so that's cool. Um, tell us then now about um, uh, the chamber and its role, especially in tourism and, and how those things are going together. So let me explain just a little bit um, how this actually works. So the, the Del Norte County Visitor Bureau is a is under it's nestled under the Chamber of Commerce, and so you know we have a visitor center which is up front, and um, we're contracted by the city and the county to run the local visitor center for tours who come into town, and our mission statement there is to help them stay one more day. So we give them things to do, we send them out to the businesses, places to eat, um, you know whether it's uh, where to stay for the night and give them lots of activities that keep them here longer. The Visitor Bureau's job is to bring those, those people here in the first place. So the Visitor Bureau reaches out to the world and we market Del Norte County and all of the various things here, including the Redwoods, of course. Um, and so, but the Visitor Center serves them once they get here. And those are two separate things. So my job is as the chamber executive director is to, you know, promote business and help the business community and do all the things that a chamber does, including the 4th of July and sea cruise events. Um, you know, we advocate with Sacramento. We, we stop what we call the job killer bills that come through the local state that make it hard for businesses to operate. And we do that pretty aggressively. But the other thing we do as the Visitor Bureau is to reach out and market with, network with Visit California, which is, you know, in charge of the fifth or sixth largest economy in the world, depending on who you talk to. And we network with the North of Ordinary or the North Coast Tourism Bureau. And that consists, that's comprised of Del Norte, Humboldt, Mendocino, and Lake County. And we do a lot of things with them. Um, on a regular basis. We pool our money, Visit California matches what we contribute, and then we market as a group, the North Coast region. And then we also network with our, you know, fellow counties up in Oregon, you know, Curry County especially, and Gold Beach and Brookings and such, because to get to any of our communities, you pretty much have to pass, pass through each other. And Correct, so, yeah. So we communicate and make sure that we're keeping each other informed of what's going on so that because there's strength in numbers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, um, so. Yeah. Okay. Well, th so just to follow up on that, as you're working with these other counties, um, you know, what do you kind of see as, especially these other rural counties, what do you see as some of the advantages for Del Norte County uh, as far as business and entrepreneurship goes? And um, what are some of the obstacles to business and entrepreneurship in Del Norte County as they relate to, you know, the other rural counties surrounding us? So we're all struggling terribly with um, with staffing. OK, we have such a we have such a lack of housing in this area and especially in Del Norte County, because, as you know, being a real estate agent yourself, we don't have a lot of available land to build on. Mm -hmm. You know, we're surrounded by the beautiful and mighty Pacific Ocean on one side. And on the other, we have the national parks, national mm -hmm. state parks, mm -hmm. and the um, U.S. force as mm -hmm. well. So mm -hmm. there's just not a lot of room to, to expand and put in subdivisions and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So if the um, hospital is recruiting physicians, then these physicians have no place to live when they come here. Mm -hmm. If the school district, you know, is trying to bring in teachers or College of the Redwoods trying to bring in uh, teachers, there's no housing. Mm -hmm. When I was the publisher of the newspaper and would hire reporters, you know, sometimes I would bring them out, they'd interview, I'd make an offer, they'd accept it, and then they wouldn't be able to find a place to live because they had a cat and there was mm -hmm. no available housing for somebody that had pets. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so... Um, that's a huge challenge. So the staffing is a huge challenge. The lack of housing, which ties into that, is a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. And those are probably the two biggest things that get in the way of business. Now, on the flip side, because we are in this beautiful nature's paradise, people do want to move here. And so, you know, people want to raise their children in a community like what we have to offer in Del Norte County. And people want to, with COVID, you know, we all learn that we can work from home in many cases. Right. And so 
we, you know this because you're in real estate. I know, you know, you had Kevin here last, um, last week on your podcast yeah. and I heard him talk about it, that, that, you know, a lot of people are buying second homes and then they're working from here and actually, you know, getting their paycheck out of the Bay area. So right. are we also, we handle the relocation requests packages through the chamber. Okay. Explain that. So people go online, they go to our website, visit dalenorthcounty.com, okay. and they they uh, can request a relocation package. And the number of relocation packages that we send out has increased since COVID started by 800%. Wow. Yeah, yeah, 800%. People want to come here. They're interested in, in working from here and retiring here. So... You know, the other thing that's increased that in 2019, 2019, the, the calendar year of 2019, we sent out 36 visitor our, um, yeah, visitor packages. People can go on the website and, re and request a visitor package that tells about, you know, Del Norte County and sure. things to do here. Last year, we sent out over 3,000. So it went from, from just, you know, a few two thousands and this year we're on track in fact we're having to make some tough decisions because there's a lot of costs involved with that you know the postage and with postage keeps going up and so <laughs> we're we're you know having to and these are people in addition to the ones that go on the website and view the visitor packs and stuff and all the things to do on the website itself so, that's amazing well right. we certainly saw it i mean uh once um you know, once the the initial scare of COVID had subsided, those first, you know, month, three months where people didn't just had no idea what was going to happen. Um, and then we saw the interest rates drop. Um, the amount of business that was coming from people uh, to buy homes from out of the area, it just really exploded, just like you said. And I think that was in due to the fact of the everyone was figured out they could work remotely. Um, right. which was, uh, I think a good thing. Um, and then, um, and then also, uh, people wanting, um, maybe a little bit more of a buffer, um, f from around themselves and around their neighbors, um, coming in from cities where things were just kind of getting a little too tight for them and they wanted to be able to spread out a little bit. And, uh, and especially I think Del Norte County is uniquely positioned in that you have, um, you know, natural resources in the ocean and in rivers. Uh, and, but then also, you know, you have this forest. And so you're able to, uh, I think, feel like you're protected a little bit in a worst case scenario, um, which I think uh, is uh, very cool as well. So I really like that Del Norte had that ability to, uh, or people wanted to move to Del Norte when there was, okay, here's a worldwide emergency. Where I'm going to go, I'm going to Del Norte. So right. I think that's Crazy, pretty neat. Right? Pretty yes. neat. Um, yeah. Well, that is cool. So, um, what do you think? Uh, well, just from a from a tourism perspective, we'll kind of move off of that. From a tourism perspective, um, what do you think? Well, let me put it this way: If someone's coming, your 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 friend is coming for the weekend. Okay, three day weekend in Del Norte. What would you lay out for them to do? What do you think is the itinerary for a three-day weekend in Del Norte? Oh, that's so easy, right? Look yeah. where we are. So, and depending on what time of year it is, okay. you know, because I will say this, I had, uh, my daughter was married this last summer in my backyard. And so we had uh, about, I don't know, 30 people come in from Louisiana. Cool. We've never been here before because uh, the groom's father, our family is all from Louisiana. And we had four days before the wedding to spend with them. And okay. we did things like, you know, the jet boats. Of course, yeah. we did South Grove. We did the uh, Trail of Titans. We did South Beach. We did Kellogg's Beach. Every day we had different things that we did. And um, and it was amazing. And they loved it. And in fact, there are some, a couple of them are thinking of moving here. Oh, fantastic. And, and moving here. And then my family all came in who had been here many times you know before but they came in and stayed for three days after the wedding and we 
we did things like we went kayaking with Redwood Rides. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we had such a blast. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah he, you know, those guides are amazing. None of us, there were 11 of us, none of us had ever been kayaking before. Yeah. And it was, it, it was magical. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we went ahead and went up to Gold Beach and did the jet boats up in Gold Beach because we'd all done, you know, the Klamath jet boats um, more than once with them. And, you know, the, the uh, Rogue River is a wonderful place and it was a wonderful trip. So cool. but typically it always includes um, a drive along Pebble Beach to see the beautiful sunset, a drive down uh, Andert's Beach Road to the Overlook and walk out and see why we're named Crescent City. It yeah. always includes a trip down to Klamath yeah. and, uh, and depending on what's going on in Klamath at the time, but the Overlook there and of course Trees of Mystery. And and this time over Thanksgiving, my family was here and we did Ocean World, which we hadn't done for a while. Oh, yeah. Because we had some kids with us. And, you know, Ocean World is always a wonderful place. And they also have the best gift shop in town. Yeah, and that's so, a great. Yeah, yep. Everybody, mm -hmm. you know, filled up their um, their bags with sweatshirts and T-shirts and, you know, some rocks from the rock stand that they have there. Took pictures on the surfboard and with the pirate sitting on the bench and uh, great memories. Very cool. So as uh, the chamber um, uh, director, obviously, so you work with, um, you work with tourism. What are some of the things that uh, you are uh, currently working on to promote Del Norte uh, in the regionally and, uh, you know, throughout the world? So, so one of our main goals is to get earned media. So, you know, as well as pushing out advertising to the world, and we use a lot of that through social media in our website, but the, the real golden ticket there is earn media. Okay. And that's coverage that you don't pay for. Okay. And so it's been our initiative for the last um, few years to really to cultivate the relationships in the media world. In fact, last February, I was in San Francisco uh, for a conference called the Visit California Outlook Conference. And through that was able to get Lonely Planet up here and Bartels Backroads, um, who was up here in July. And that episode will be coming out, I believe he told me late January, uh, but we'll send out a link to you when a video, an episode that he filmed here. And awesome. he did, he did um, Trees of Mystery. He did the Lily harvest in smith river and he filmed uh he had a grove of titans so those were the three things that he did during the two days that he was here so we just had uh visit california has a new initiative it's called native Amer native california okay. and they're really focusing on uh their on our tribals partners and okay. what's going on with tribes and the rancherias and so um there's a wonderful new link out a video that just came out and the the person who was up here filming it she went out on the redwood canoes she met with uh emily reed and amanda from the talawa and hiked the grove of titans with them um she she stayed at Haliquit lodge or actually Haliquit village uh, right on the smith river because they wanted to stay in you know tribal owned property and so uh and they've now done a video of it and it's out to the world Oh, and fantastic. Well, we'll definitely link to that um, on the YouTube. Yes. Yeah. And so we just had another article. Uh, Boy Scout Tree Trail was named the number one hike in California. And uh, Lonely Planet has done another article on us talking about uh, Grove of Titans. We had a gentleman here gosh, I guess it was just two weeks ago, who did a wonderful video on the Grove of Titans hiking it and on Porta Pines. And I'll send oh, cool. you links to all of that stuff. So Very cool. Getting the, the world to know that we're here and write about us and push that information out. San Francisco Chronicle and the LA Times does it fairly regularly. So what awesome. we do is we push story ideas to them. Yeah, and we have an agency, Lynette Braylord, who owns Lulish Design, who is uh, just the top top game. She is very talented, and so she's with our agency of record, 
and she's who we work with on our website and uh, website, social media, graphic design, brochures, you know, maps, things like that. Cool. How can someone get involved with the chamber if they uh, if they want to get more involved or how can how, how does that work? Oh, my goodness. I love talking to people. All they need to do is, you know, my email is director at delnort.org. My cell phone number is on the recording at the front when we're closed so that if somebody wants to reach out to me, they just call the chamber office and my personal cell phone is on there. I will answer my phone seven days a week. You know, it's, it's always right here, just like all of us. Right. <laughs> um, but, you know, and, and as the chamber director, I talk with people about everything from those who are just thinking of starting a business to those who already have a business and any ways that I can help them. That's you know, during COVID, um, you know, I would go out and meet with the various businesses and help them create their reopening plans when the state shut us all down in March of 2020, in order to reopen, we had to file reopening plans with the health department. And so I knew nothing about any of that, but, you know, sit through a couple of webinars, talk with um, Cal OSHA and some others, and then, you know, help the businesses navigate that. Okay. And so when a business person comes to you or someone who's thinking about starting a business, um, you know, we already talked about uh, maybe some, some staffing or employment issues. Um, what other kind of things are you, or what other pieces of advice are you offering or, um, what other opportunities do you think there are for, uh, entrepreneurs in Del Norte County? So Thomas, I, one of my favorite phrases to tell people is think of me as part of your team, but not on your payroll. Okay. And that's it right there. You know, I worked with for over 40 years in advertising at newspapers. My job was to help those businesses be successful right and so whether it was um helping them with i used to call it get the you know no dead cats in the doorway because you can you can do everything right inside your store but if there's a dead cat in your doorway <laughs> you're not gonna step over it right yeah that'd be bad yeah so you know i would do things like walk the local Rayleigh's grocery store and rate them on you know 10 different oh things. wow and then sit down with their corporate folks and say, okay, this is what you're, this is what you're doing great. And this is what you're not doing so great in. Cool. And so as difficult as it is to be brutally honest with a business, you know, that's how I can help them. So sometimes people come to me with ideas that they're just a little, you know, it's going to be a really tough, uh, sure. tough win for you. And so, you know, sharing that with them. But most times people come to me with ideas and then I hook them up with the SBDC. There's a, a woman named Samantha here mm -hmm. in town that wants to do a food truck, a vegan food truck. Okay, cool. Great idea. And, mm -hmm. you know, we know that Brandy Stevens has that corner on 101 um, across from and the building across from where La Capella yeah. is, right? And she wants to put food trucks there. So I hooked up this young lady, Samantha, with Layla Roberts' team with the um, SBDC, which is a small business um, um, economic development, and then with Brandy Stevens and her contact information, and then uh, with a couple other folks that are currently doing food trucks so that she could talk with them. So, you know, everybody's different. And um, there's a young lady here in town that's doing chocolate out of a, a kitchen, you know, um, mm -hmm. enterprise. And oh, it's so good. And so mm -hmm. I, you know, I would in a heartbeat, um, she doesn't want to get too big because she does it, you know, from home, sure. but he's a business that, you know, could become um, global because yeah. of, you know, of the ability to ship. Yeah. And, and she's a young woman who moved here from the San Francisco Bay area and missed having the variety of chocolates that they had there. And oh, so cool. she does these organic chocolates. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Look at Tsunami Lanes. Look at that wonderful business. Yeah. We were just there I over the weekend. Lane. Yeah. Yes, right? Yeah. And isn't it wonderful to have the bowling alley open again? Absolutely. And riding like that? Yeah. Yes. So that's you know, one of the first things I did was meet with um, with the partners and see what could we do to help them as the chamber. And uh, Well, it seems like they got a lot of energy uh, and they were very excited. And, um, you know, I was happy with... Um, Happy with the full experience. And also, you know, I was um, 
I was thinking before we went in, I was thinking, you know, if you really nail the arcade, that seems like a great place where, you know, because not everyone can wants to bowl, you know, for younger kids, bowling for the amount of time it takes to bowl is a, kind of a long time. You need something else to do. And I walk in and they just absolutely nailed that arcade. It's wonderful. Know, it's so, uh, so many interactive games. Uh, it's almost like a carnival more than just like, you know, shooter up video games. It was um, great. I was very impressed. So they did a great job. And then they and have great French fries too. Developing that lot right next to them. That Absolutely. Have. Yeah. You know, I can't wait to see um, Cynthia throw an axe. She said they're going to have, you know, an axe. They do. They do. <laughs> I threw you an axe. Yeah, it was great. It was yeah. tons of fun. Right. Um, well, that's cool. Well, um, okay. So what about, um, tell us about some of the events that the chamber puts on throughout the year. Um, and, uh, and if people can get involved or how a business person could become a part of some of those events and, and promote themselves. You know, we do the 4th of July, which is actually four events in one. And, um, and we also do Sea Cruise, which was the most successful Sea Cruise car show this year in October that we've ever had, you know, record number of attendees. Um, and both of those big events are underwritten by the local business community. Okay. It's all of you who support these events and bring these people to town. But we, and I'm going to share something with you that nobody else knows. This okay, great. Day. Exclusive. So, morning um, had our second meeting on a new festival for Del Norte County and it's going to be called uh, although you know this could change but what we decided this morning is it's going to be called uh, the Komome Festival okay and it will take place in April which is the shoulder season so it's important to bring people from out of the area you know we really don't need more people here in July or August you know we're 100% occupancy right yep. uh, but we sure do during these these uh, shoulder season so the Kamome Festival will be a two-day event um, that will consist of educating and preparing our youth here in town for the next earthquake and or tsunami. How do you spell that? Uh, Kamome? Yeah. K-A-M-O-M-E. Okay. So that's the name of the little boat, you know, the little boat. Right. That... Okay. And so... Um, this April will be the 10th anniversary of that little boat washing up on shore. And, you know, it's such a great story. It's such a great story that that um, NBC heard it, fell in love with it, and spent millions of dollars yeah, making it's incredible. a documentary about it. Yep. Yeah. And so, you know, that's been pushed out to the world. So in April, we actually have a, um, a point of a designated point of interest that's going to be unveiled. And, and so when people come here, we can then direct them to that point of interest, which will have some information and a kiosk and a mural and stuff wow. like that. Wow. And so, but, uh, so this will be a two day event. It's going to be on a Friday, Saturday. We're pretty sure the dates will be on the, hold on, let me get back to that meeting. So um, April 14th and 15th, the first day will be the kids day full of activities and the community will hear uh, later on in January, how they can be involved with that. And on Saturday would be the community event, uh, which we hope to through marketing and reaching outside the area, bring people here into Del Norte County to put, you know, uh, heads in beds, as we say, yeah, and, uh, and some money in the restaurants and the stores. Very cool. That is very cool. Um, you know, I had I heard a uh, uh, I can't remember the woman's name, but there is that um, uh, tsunami disaster preparedness um, organization. Um, and uh, a while back, they gave a presentation and uh, I was so impressed with um, the organization that they had done. Um, but what it sort of pointed out to me is that like, you know, having awareness around disasters is not only do you want to be prepared in case something like that were to happen, but it also really brings people together in that here's the plan where we are all going to rely on each other because there could be some event. And, you know, I live out here in Gasky and, um, uh, you know, so there is a threat of maybe like, you know, a fire or uh, maybe like a landslide or something um, where people are going to need to come together 
and and rely on one another and make a plan or have a plan and then execute that plan. And uh, and so those types of things, um, whether it's earthquakes, tsunami, and, you know, it's not that fun to talk about disasters happening, but um, being prepared to rely on one another and being resilient as a community um, is something that I think is really, really important, um, especially when you are or have the potential to be as isolated as we do in, in Del Nord. I mean, it is something that we, you know, need to be aware of and something that we need to plan for. So do you know how many bridges we have in this County? Oh, tell me. I have no idea. Oh, a <laughs> lot. <laughs> but we have a lot. Look yeah. how many ravines and stuff. We know, you know, we know that there's going to be another earthquake um, and they talk about, you know, the big one or whatever, but, you know, an earthquake that's going to knock out our bridges. I'm out in Fort Dick is yep. where I live. And I don't know how many, you know, because we can't see under the road, but you're right. We're going to be isolated. We're going to yep. be stuck to our own little neighborhoods. Yep. And I have seven people that I share a road with and that's it. Wow. And so, um, so, you know, we need to be prepared and, yep. and, you know, when you talk with any of the um, search and rescue guys or women or the ham uh, radio people, they're so passionate about preparedness. And so the thing that we can do is teach our children. You know, we all know the thing about, you know, when the earth shakes, um, you know, it had to higher ground because we're on the ocean. Yep. But, but it very well could be that we don't get a tsunami here, but if the earth is shaking, that we you know, are going to have problems with surviving that earthquake yep. and the hours afterwards. Yeah. So, Interesting. Anyway. Hmm. Well, that is cool. Um, uh, one more thing I wanted to talk to you about is um, uh, your, I mean, it's a, the relationship, because you did say, you know, you were talking about getting people here to come stay um, during the shoulder season. And so we kind of have a season of tourism that comes through the area. Um, and uh, a lot of the businesses are focused on tourism. Um, now, it can be or it, it is, I would say, very difficult to survive as a business um, when you make a lot of money in the summer. And then in the wintertime, it all gets kind of eroded by just trying to either stay open or not stay open. It always kind of seems like this... Um, a constant battle for businesses, what to do in the winter time. Um, and so that's very cool that you guys are promoting um, uh, some more shoulder season events. Uh, but how is the relationship to tourism and especially hotels uh, impacting the chamber? And how, how does that all fit together? I know you were kind of mentioning that before. You know, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what your question is. Um, but oh, well, I will oh, say okay. this. Um, I will say this is that the smart business people, and there's a whole county full of them out there, right? They've been doing this for a long time. And so they have learned that, you know, they make, they work so hard from May through, you know, the 1st of October, sometimes without even a day off. Yeah. And, you know, seven days a week. And then um, they've got to save those dollars that they make so they can get through the lean months. The holidays help, of course. And, you know, people coming to town to visit family helps. But if you're a lodging facility, and I think we're running an average of 70% occupancy uh, for the year. And so that's a lot of them are, you know, 90, 95 to 100% during the summer months. And then they may only be at 40 or 50% in the off season. So, um, you know, they reduce staffing during those times. Yeah. They hours a lot of times um you know we've got restaurants here that that aren't serving three meals a day anymore just because of staffing yeah and so and then you know a lot of you know christina's is closed for a month because they take their vacation yeah in, in december and uh work like fiends the rest of the year yeah yeah well talk so to us a little bit that I, you know the other one that's a prime example is you know by far, one of the most successful businesses in our county is Trees of Mystery. Mm -hmm. For, what, over 75 years now, they've been strong and, and doing a great job. And so their model is they have the Forest Cafe across the street, and they close it during the winter months because, you know, they keep it open as long as they, they have so much money to use each year. And when that money's gone, they close the, the restaurant because 
otherwise it will drain the other businesses mm -hmm. that they own. Absolutely. So, yeah. So you know, very smart business models here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's great. Um, okay. So talk to us about um, TOT, uh, explain what that is and its relationship to tourism and hotels and short-term rentals. Cause I think that's important. So um, TOT taxes, you know, yeah. when we, when we go travel, we pay a percentage usually on our lodging that goes into a fund. Uh, so here in Del Norte County, we have the city and the county. Um, and I believe we're at 10% now in both places. So when someone is staying either in a vacation home or a motel, hotel, they're paying that tax and it goes back to our city and our county, depending on where the uh, lodging site is located. And then the city and the county both uh, contribute so much of that back to the visitor bureau so that we can market Del Norte County and keep more people coming. And, you know, I just got yesterday the counties um, and they all run on fiscal year from July 1 through June 30th. So last year, the 21-22 the fiscal year, the county was up in TOT 20%. Wow. Yeah, that's huge, 20%. So they collected in um, prior year to that $741,000 in TOT. And they give us, the Visitor Bureau, they give us, um, I think we're up to now $114,000 that they give us each year. Wow. And we, uh, we use that for marketing. So this last year, they were up to $889,000 and some change. And for the last quarter, the first quarter of this year, from July 1 through um, September 30th, they were up 7%. That one quarter- so Did you say that's almost a, almost a million dollars of TOT collected? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that, would, that would be $10, $10 million in tours or in heads and beds revenue for Del Norte County. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's amazing. Yes. Amazing, right? Wow. Amazing. Yeah. And so, um, right. And that's a huge increase. You know, that they were averaging, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I would sure. say pre-COVID, they probably had about 500,000. And so yeah. um, what you were saying earlier about people wanting to be here, because we're not in the cities, you know, no. we're not, not in the crowds. Uh, rural California has benefited by our numbers going up when the cities um you know, we're all shut down and people were flocking and not going to San Francisco and not going to Disneyland and whatnot. Wow. They came here instead. So. Very cool. Very well, cool, Well, right? that is great. Well, Cindy, thank you so much for chatting with me. Uh, I'm sure we could chat a lot longer, but um, um, really great. And uh, again, kind of tell people how they can reach out and, um, and how they can so, get involved. Two things I want to say. One is that I was um, spent the evening at Requa Inn last oh. friday night um jan had hoped my mama had yeah she told me right, your mother yeah. yeah oh my god we're so in love with her yeah so, she's um, great she hosted us for some hors d'oeuvres and wine us as being the uh my counterparts from mendocino humboldt um and lake counties were up we had our quarterly meeting and so the red redwood hotel and casino hosted us cool. and we stayed there at that beautiful facility and uh, your mother opened up the inn so that we could do a tour. We couldn't let these people be here and not see what a fabulous uh, that's great. Requa Inn is. Yeah. And she was so delightful. She gave us um, what she's done with that place is amazing. I took a tour probably the year that she bought it. And it has changed. And it was great then. But now I just can't wait to stay there. And I can't yeah. wait to get my sisters in. Yes. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty neat place. Perfect. They've done a great job. So, so kudos to both her and the uh, Uroc Economic Development Corporation for sure. hosting us. And it was fun to have us all there in Klamath. Of course, that Friday was that crazy storm. But Klamath wasn't as bad as Crescent City. So yeah. and then people can reach me through my email, director at delnart.org. Okay. They call the chamber office, and everybody knows how to Google that phone number. Um, or my cell phone, which is 541 251 0591.
Fantastic. I would just say, reach out to me. I'm happy to help you however I can. I might try to sell you a, a membership, though. Be prepared. <laughs> Awesome. Well, that is great, Cindy. Thank you again so much for your time and uh, all the hard work that you've done promoting Del Nord over the years. Really yeah. very, very cool. Well, thank you, Thomas, for having me here. And bye, awesome. everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, Cindy. Bye.